there's certain foods that are more common in terms of producing gas and bloating. So we need to be aware of those. And from your experience, Will, what would you think are the two biggest areas of concern if somebody is experiencing chronic gas and bloating and listening to this? I have advice that I routinely would give to people who come in with gas and bloating, like literally on the first visit. And that would be to eliminate non-fermented dairy and artificial sweeteners. Fascinating, because we just did an episode about artificial sweeteners, and we're probably going to do some more in the future. So can we start with, with those? Yeah, people have traditionally thought of artificial sweeteners as being benign. I mean, I have certainly been guilty of this myself. 10 years ago, I was dropping a couple packets of, of Splenda into every single coffee. Um, and I <laughs> that's, think, a, that's a lot of sweetener. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I've moved on. I drink my coffee black now. I've gotten used to it. But the thing is, they're not absorbed by the intestinal system. They don't contain calories. And, and for these reasons, people think of them as just being completely benign. But actually, it's a lot more complicated than that. They still come into contact with our gut microbes. And because they're coming into contact with our gut microbes, they can be fermented or they can have different effects on our digestive system that ultimately cause gas and bloating. And also people should be aware they can cause diarrhea. So that makes sense on sweeteners. What about dairy? Why would, um, why would you look to eliminate that? Well, I think first of all, Jonathan, let me sort of make a distinction. There's dairy products that are fermented and then there's dairy products that are not fermented. And fermented dairy products are things like hard cheeses or kefir uh, or yogurt. And the fermentation process is unique because it actually the microbes, the bacteria that are living as a part of the ferment, they consume the lactose. And well, could you just, what is lactose? Lactose is a sugar. So it's the rare example where an animal product, you know, in this case, dairy, uh, actually contains a carbohydrate. So um, lactose is a sugar that is specifically found in cow's milk. And around 70% of the world is actually intolerant of lactose. So what that means is that, I mean, there's a certain amount they can tolerate. It's not an allergy, but when they sort of exceed what their body is capable of consuming, then the digestive symptoms kick in. They get gas and bloating. And once again, similar to the artificial sweeteners, they may, they may actually get diarrhea. So, you know, for these people, if they were to lower their intake of these lactose containing dairy foods, they would find their digestive symptoms would improve very quickly. Brilliant. So, so there we have it. Uh, it turns out, like so much on this podcast, that gas and bloating is a lot more complex than just having tight trousers and that there's a lot of reasons why you might experience it. So, you know, when we sum this all up well, if somebody is experiencing gas and bloating, what steps do you think they should take to remedy the situation? Help, help us to pull it all together. I think for the person who's at home, you know, what, what I really want to encourage you to do is to think about these four specific things because it could be a combination of them. So do a personal intake. If you're suffering with gas and bloating, do you, do you like uh, sip through straws, chew gum, drink carbonated drinks, eat fast? Do you uh, have constipation? Do you eat foods that are known to cause a lot of gas and bloating? And the last thing is, is there any sort of history of irritable bowel syndrome or damage to the microbiome? And this will help you to sort of get closer to what's going on. And then once you understand that, then you can create plans that are more targeted in terms of your approach. And Will, you know, I find I do experience some bloating and gas sometimes, particularly when I'm ramping up some new, fo some new food that Zoe thinks is great for me, but has lots of fiber in it. Do I just need to avoid that food? No. So the answer is not to avoid. We don't want to avoid. Uh, what we want is we want to include that food, but we also want to understand that our body may take time to adapt to it. So if, if you haven't been eating that food in the past, then you're just not ready to consume large quantities of it. But you absolutely could be in the future. So you just start low and you go slow. And over time, by increasing the amount and giving your body a chance...